Hello for this second episode of our series devoted to uh, making games with Godot and Escoria, point-and-click adventure games. And this series, uh, just like our game, will be focused strictly on low-resolution re games uh, that you might call uh, retro games or pixel art games. Uh, because that's just the, the best way of doing graphics. Obviously, ev everyone would agree on that. <laughs> so, uh, in this series, uh, this is a bit of an introduction. Uh, just to be clear on the terms, uh, what we call low resolution is uh, really the, the really low resolutions that you had back then with EGA screens and CGA uh, and VGA screens. So, 320 by 200 or 240. Uh, of course, there was even lower resolutions on the Commodore 64 and stuff. But that's what we call low resolution. As opposed to a high resolution, and that's going to make uh, <laughs> the newer generation laugh, uh, high resolution is uh, anything above double that resolution. So 640 by 400 or 480, depending on the context. Uh, that's what we call high resolution. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, boomer. Um, and this series exists because there will be several ways of achieving that in Godot. How to have a low resolution game, how to have a retro uh, pixel art game. And as of now, uh, in Escoria, there is uh, mostly three general uh, directions to, to achieve that, uh, which I'm going to list right now. So, three ways of doing low resolution. The most obvious one, the first one, is making everything low resolution. Your entire game is 320 by 200 pixels, or 240 pixels, depending on what you prefer. And that's it. Everything has fat pixels. Uh, and obviously the advantage, advantage of that is that it's the simplest solution. You never have to worry about upscaling or downscaling. You just generate all your assets in low, resol in low resolutions and what you see is what you get. You just sl slap them onto the screen and you're done. So we're going to talk about that in the next video. Uh, but then there are other ways of achieving low resolution and maybe ways that take advantage of modern technology and can save you some time or let you achieve more impressive uh, visual effects uh, while still maintaining this uh, impression of low resolution. So the second way is what I will I would call mixed resolutions. So what it means, it, it means exactly uh, what the word means, that you mix together uh, some high resolution uh, elements and some low resolution elements. And more specifically, uh, the game, the game's window, uh, has a higher resolution than what's in it the rooms of your game, of your point-and-click game. So the rooms of your point-and-click game are still 300 by 200 or 240, but then the game is a multiple of that. So you can do uh, multiply by 2, multiply by 4, multiply by 8. Uh, the sky is the limit. But that's all you have to remember, that some elements in the game will have a higher resolution uh, whether you show it or not, it does not matter if then you try to hide it. You will still use it, take advantage of this higher resolution. Uh, so typically, uh, the, ele the elements that might be higher resolution in your game, unbeknownst to the player, would be the fonts, if you want them to be more readable. Uh, it will let you add more pixel to the pixels to the fonts. Uh, the UIs, uh, either what's in the UI or the way they move around, like maybe you want them to move by half pixels to have smoother movements. Uh, the scrollings in the rooms as well, if you have parallax. Maybe you want the parallax to be high resolution because uh, in low resolution it can make the movements of the parallax uh, a bit jittery. So, long thing short, some elements are in high resolution while the rest of the game is low resolution. Uh, the disadvantages of this method is that, uh, first of all, you can only upscale. Uh, you start from a low resolution, and then some elements will be adjusted to to fit the entire screen. To be, they will be upscaled to stretched to fit the entire screen. So they go from small to big. 
as opposed to method three that we're going to see in a moment where you can go in any direction upscale downscale whatever so only upscale uh, and another problem with uh, this approach is that some people hate that some people hate uh, they straight away they see that some pixels are big and some pi pixels are smaller or they see that some pixels are not perfectly aligned so to use with moderation but let's just call it a uh, technical uh, technicality a trick that you reserve yourself the right to use uh, for some very specific things and finally the third approach to low resolution is uh, what I call complete freedom but what I mean by that is that uh, anything in your assets can be any resolution and then you upscale it or downscale it to any other resolution uh, the final uh, the, f the final target obviously being uh, low resolution as you want it to be uh, retro pixel but uh, it might be tricky it might be tricky uh, because as anyone who has ever worked with a paint program knows when you upscale or downscale if you don't choose carefully how you do that uh, you might introduce some blur or some some aliasing or so on and so on um, but you choose to do that in Godot so uh, the, the, pr the advantage of this method is that it's what, what you call non-destructive the pros would call that non-destructive that you don't lose any information because you leave uh, you leave your assets high resolution if, if you have some high resolution assets let's say, I don't know, you have a picture of a cloud or whatever you just import it as is you never touched your paid you never touch your paint program to uh, downscale it and then you let Godot do it you do it directly in Godot uh, and what it means is that the upscales and downscales are done at runtime so the original information from the asset, the extra pixels, are never lost once you close your game the image is still high resolution in your assets it becomes low resolution only at, at runtime and you let Godot do the work so that's an advantage, non-destructive. But uh, the problem, obviously, is that uh, you need to understand how Godot works with scaling, upscale and downscale. And on top of that, you have an extra problem, is that uh, if you mix all those resolutions, maybe you're going to break something in, in Escoria, or at least your game will not be compatible with Escoria. A typical example being the position of the mouse on the screen. If uh, if some is high resolution, some low resolution, uh, maybe uh, Escoria believes that you're clicking in the middle of the screen, but actually uh, it's the top left of the ass. Well, uh, you know what I mean? The, the coordinates of everything are transformed all the time, and you might have a broken transformation somewhere, uh, leading the engine to believe that you're clicking somewhere else than you're actually clicking. Uh, so it's hard to explain like this with text, but that's the idea. So let's recap. Three ways of doing low resolution retro pixel. Everything low resolution. Mixed resolutions with only upscale. So that means your game window is a multiple of your low resolution. And finally, uh, scale anything to anything. Thank you for watching. Uh, see you in the next video.